How do you measure the success of your supply side? In this episode, we look into supply side metrics and what success looks like for your marketplace. I'm joined by Ryan Green, who is the CEO at Gridwise, the leading business app for gig economy drivers. And uh, Gridwise helps gig economy drivers to manage the, and optimize their work on rideshare and delivery platforms. And uh, because of that, they are enabled to have a ton of this awesome data and understanding and how people move, how goods are moving across platforms um, and locations. And so, um, Ryan, maybe I'll throw it to you just to explain a little bit about how you guys serve more than just gig workers and how you've come across this this data that you that you now have, the insights that you've gotten from the Gridwise platform. Yeah, of course. Well, first off, thanks for having me on the episode today. I'm uh, really excited to be here. Um, I would say that, you know, you as you described Gridwise, it, at our core, our, our platform is focused on empowering gig workers and helping them to be better workers on the platforms they're working for, like Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Instacart. And we're actually, uh, I would say they're, they're tracking, we're, we're helping them track all their finances and uh, consume analytics on what's happening in their market to inform when and where they should be working. And we have drivers who are tracking earnings and, and expenses across, I think, 90 different rideshare and delivery companies right now that we saw actively happen last month. And, and as we've amassed this, this network of, of hundreds of thousands of drivers who are, are using and relying on Gridwise to manage their work, uh, their gig work, we've, we've really started to gain a, a very strong picture into and capture a strong picture and, and insight into how people are people and goods are moving across all of those different platforms that these workers gig workers are working for so we understand really the supply dynamics uh, and we'll talk more about the supply side uh, elements as well uh, today but really is like when we think about the supply side the, the uh, dynamics is really understanding when workers start typically are, are working when they stop trends related to behaviors related to work how much time they're spending in different areas things of that sort um, but also outside of the, the worker behavior and, and patterns on the supply side, we also are capturing the demand. So we're understanding uh, where trips are starting, trips, rideshare trips, uh, all types of deliveries, food, grocery, parcel, etc. We understand where they start, where they end, so the origin and destination of each trip. And we're seeing millions and millions of these a week uh, come into our system. And we understand the economics associated with each one of those trips. And so we've got like not only a very granular view into supply and demand in each uh, region in a metropolitan area across the U.S., uh, but we've now possessed the most comprehensive data set in this entire industry. Um, so it's given us a really great purview into a lot of those movements, and we've started to utilize a lot of that data to create more compelling insights for the workers who are using our app specific to the city that they work in, uh, and in turn, our, our mission is really focused on empowering and improving the way people work and goods move. And so we, we want to improve mobility as much as we're improving the uh, uh, workers, uh, workers' daily lives. And so what we do is we actually pack, anonymize and package this data into various types of analytics and insights that we license to a lot of different uh, in, uh, industries and verticals like retail and real estate, restaurants, financial services, uh, mobility companies, and and, and so many different types of industries that are using this in our insights to empower their operations, their go-to-market strategies, and so much more. And so us as a platform is, is um, the different services we offer really focused on enabling uh, and enabling us to positively impact mobility uh, and improve the way that people are working. That's awesome. It, it's really great that you guys are able to affect so broadly as well. I think that that... Um, You've honed in on something that can be really beneficial to a lot of people. Um, and then when you think specifically about just how do you impact the data that you have, how does that impact the supply side of marketplaces? Um, I know that's kind of where we're wanting to focus for a lot of the episode. Why is that a topic that you think is really important to, to talk about? Why is this data that you have helpful? And I guess in short, really what I'm asking is why is that something that you're passionate about? Well, I, I think we're, we're passionate about it because that's where, as we think about the marketplaces that exist today that have both supply of workers and, and consumer demand, we started Gridwise and have grown 
uh, with the core premise on empowering that's the supply side. And so we think a lot about the supply side of the marketplaces and, and how to empower those workers and how to help them better, um, better earn out on the road. And, and so I, I would say our, our, our passion stems from really the, the core thesis of our entire business. Um, I, I think in turn is like when we think about, I, I, I think when we started Gridwise years ago, a lot of people, I, I think supp the, the supply side of, of workers was kind of put to the wayside or the value of the supply wasn't, I, I think, seen in the same way it is or the same light it is today. And the reason that is, is because like, especially since the pandemic, you've seen just this, ex it's like the, the, the timing of the pandemic, as well as just different technologies that have been, that have made it easier to stand up these types of gig marketplaces. It's like, you've seen just competition explode for the, the amount of different platforms that gig workers can, can work for. Um, which is making it more challenging to, for any one particular gig platform marketplace to gig marketplace to build that worker loyalty, um, just as you're just seeing so much fragmentation in the market. But because of that, everyone's starting to see is like, wow, gig workers are extremely valuable and, and, and key to our, our platforms. And, and so like, I, I think is. Uh, kind of our core thesis as a business aligning with just the industry shifts and everyone realizing the power of, of the supply side of the market, these marketplaces is kind of really, um, I think even fuel that passion even further for just understanding the impact that a platform like ours can have in helping, helping, uh, to optimize and, and, and uh, optimize the supply and, and help empower the supply as well. So if you think as a, as a marketplace leader, they may be thinking, so I've got a lot of insights that I can get from my own platform metrics that I want to be looking at. And I've got a lot of insights that I could be getting um, from, you know, studies from marketplace leaders from uh, Gridwise or elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the, the foundational question before we even start to talk about some of those findings is what are the critical things that they should be thinking about on their supply side? What metrics should they be considering important? Yeah, I, I think it's like um, a lot of people tend, I mean, all, all the platforms, they, they, they have mountains of their own data, right? To, to look at, to analyze and to build insight into efficiency of supply and throughput of workers. And, um, but I think it's like where, where a lot of companies we've seen haven't, been able to expand their visibility into as much of just like, how are, uh, what is the entire market of workers and the behavior for those metrics look like? And being able to kind of shift out of the way that they've internally looked at metrics versus like, how is this, what does this holistically look like as a worker in their entire driver journey? So for example, what I mean by these things is that, for example, like if we think about dollars per hour, it's like wage metrics for for driver the 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 hour component the duration component a lot of the gig platforms what they are able to like what they look at what they measure and what they can measure is online time on their particular platform right mm -hmm. but what happens is that a large percentage of drivers are working for multiple different platforms and but they may only but whether they work for multiple platforms or they only work for their theirs online time isn't always rep purely representative of the entire amount of time that that worker is working. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's easy to only key in on that, but you have to understand the full breadth of work time for that worker to understand the impact on their wages and how they perceive working for you as well as they're going to see their dollars per hour, uh, be like that duration. Uh, on your platform could be five hours when they actually work for eight hours today doing deliveries. Mm -hmm. Now that eight hours could have been, you know, part of the time they're working for another platform and switching between them. But a, a large part of that time is then not being utilized on, 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 and just searching for work and waiting for their next trip. And a lot of times you'll see workers going offline to reposition themselves into go somewhere else and drive back to a location so they don't get pulled further and further outside of the city. And 
And so you're, you, you, you have this like kind of manipulated view into dollars per hour by just using that online tag, but that's what they have to go off of. And so I think as we think about the like true dollars per hour, the true hours worked, the true utilization, I, I think though these types of metrics, dollars per hour, hours worked across each uh, as a gig worker, as well as the amount of time they've spent on your platform and others, utilization is, is key. Um, and thinking through like the, I would say like just the like throughput and like liquidity in the marketplace, you have drivers out on the road. What are the amount of trips they're completing per hour? And that's a measure of, that's like a, a real measure of just like the, the total the balance between supply and demand. If you have a, a extremely low trips per hour per driver, you're at like 0.2 trips per hour. It means you have a lot of supply in the road, but not much demand. Right. Whereas like if you have vice versa of that, you've just got, uh, you may have drivers who are just completing tons of trips per hour, which is great for the, the driver, but you may have customer wait times or a lot of people not being able to get requests mm -hmm. ETAs or, or spiking up as well. And so, um, I think that's a, that's always a great measure to look at is the trips per hour piece, but that. Again, that, that hour duration piece, I think it's important to look at it from your online time, but also holistically for uh, gig workers as the entire time that they've been working. The other things I'll, I'll uh, a few others I'll mention real quick is um, the share of time across platforms. Like how much time are they spending? And they may, you know how much time they're spending working on yours, how much time are they spending working on others? And, and it's not even just like, hey, we, we I don't think anybody's in a place where we can say it's like we, yeah, you, you want them spending a hundred percent of their time on your platform, but there's reasons that they're, they, you know, someone may work for rideshare service and then work for delivery at another time. They're, tr they're trying to optimize their time and their optimal well being to op maximize their earnings, maximize, you know, uh, align with their preferences for the types of work they want to do at different times. But what I think what's important to understand that share of time is just like, how, what are those different categories that they're working for? The types of work that they're doing, they could go walk a dog for two hours and then go do food deliveries and then complete rideshare trip on Saturday, rideshare trips on Saturday night, cause it's lucrative at that time. And so I think that helps shed light into, once you start doing that is understanding preferences of services and behaviors at a geo, geo local level, I think is very valuable to start to understand and then that kind of stems in the last one I'll mention, which is worker, like the market share of worker engagement. Uh, so like, what is your like worker market share? Something we, we look at um, a lot is just like how much, if they're, it's just like who's capturing loyalty uh, in every market and how does that differ by geos and what are those factors that are impacting that? If you see that, X percentage of, of drivers are spending a lot of their time on DoorDash in this market relative to, let's say, Uber Eats or, or Lyft, and that could be flipped in another one. But I think understanding those benchmarks and the dynamics impacting them is, is very key. So the approach and recommendation that we have as we think about like what to look at is more of a holistic approach of the understanding the entire market than just what's happening on your platform. Yeah, I love that so much of the language there, so much of the thoughts are really steeped in this worker focused marketplace um, language to me. Like, I think that we believe really strongly that the, the gig economy is going to grow and um, it's going to survive. And the companies that are going to win long term are going to be the ones that serve gig workers well. And so I loved hearing a lot of that language, but on the same like along the same lines with each of the things that you're mentioning, uh, there are things that are really key to marketplaces for their for their uh, success and survivability, like the ability to understand uh, better your supply demand balance, right? Liquidity in your marketplace. Those are things that if you can get a more full picture, I mean, that it's, it's incredibly, incredibly helpful for marketplaces. And I don't think marketplace leaders have to be told that they know that they're looking at liquidity and and supply demand balances every day but really really awesome stuff and you really got me wanting to just hear some of the the data that you guys have gotten what are the things that you have learned from the gridwise platform um along those lines if you just wanted to talk broadly about that i'd love to hear i think it'd be helpful for marketplace leaders to hear some of the things that you guys have have found 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Happy to touch on a, a few high level insights um, that that we see, and and I think that are some of them. Like one that uh, the first one I'll mention is probably more surprising to people is that you know I talk about the I talked about utilization earlier, yeah. right? And what we see is that drivers or gig workers like nationwide, we see that they're actually spending about fifty seven percent of their time unutilized while they're actively working. So that means someone is going out saying, I'm going to go work right now. I'm out on the road and I've, I've started, you know, my, my, my sh- version of a shift and 57% of the, let's say I drove, I worked for eight hours, 57, almost more than half of that time had, I, I had no goods or passengers in my vehicle at that time. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a, that's a large number. And, and like, what is that? I obviously like, I, I think people understand what that means, but I, I think some takeaways from that is like, I, I think there's an understanding that like workers have more capacity to be utilized and, and they may be utilized if they are, I, I would say, you know, if you look at the dynamics of a city versus, you know, a New York versus Kansas city, the utilization is going to look very different. So we're speaking of like the nationwide level on this, but I would say there's like, not only is like, there's more capacity for those workers to be utilized, but another challenge is not just about, you know, how much demand that you're able to bring that work. You could bring them a lot, but some, but they also workers need guidance on how, you know, I talked about earlier, they're flipping between multiple platforms. They, you could be bringing them all the demand in the world, but they have your, your app turned off in the moment and they've got someone else turned on, um, or they are just having, they're struggling and need guidance to understand when and where they should be working. Um, as you know, many drivers today, um, who aren't using a lot of the tools out there to help guide them are kind of blind out on the road. They're just kind of like, Hey, I just. I'm a rideshare driver. I, I picked up someone from the airport. They took me all the way out of the suburbs, pretty far out here. And it's like, do I drive back to the city? Do I go back to the airport? Do I wait here to get a ride so I can get some money on the way back and I don't spend all my gas, like, you know, I consume gas and, you know, cur- accrue expenses on my vehicle for just going back with nobody. It's hard to answer a lot of those questions. And those are ongoing operational challenges. And so I think that that all ties, there's, there's a lot to solution still around how we better utilize those workers and, and, and also improve the way we think about utilization is like key to like control of emissions as well. Yeah. So worker utilization, 57% of the time they spend working isn't utilized. That's, that's incredible to me. I love the insights that you brought from that and just some of the, the ways that you think that could, that can affect the way we think and plan in our marketplaces. Um, do you, did you have any other insights you could share maybe around worker wage or times mm-hmm. that gig workers are, are working? Yeah. Yeah. So I would say it's like in terms of terms of work, worker wage, I mean, it's going to differ across different categories of, of like, as we think of categories of, of ride share, food, grocery, um, I would say it's like, you see that ride share still tends to be the area where drivers are going to make the most money. Uh, we see that they're they're earning about eighteen to twenty four dollars an hour nationwide, and I, I kind of pull out that range because I think it's there's a lot of uh, we we see pretty broad differences between day of week of those hourly earnings, and so you're going to see this like I I would say it's like I, I think over the last if we looked at like the last twelve weeks we would see that Tuesdays are where drivers are making about. Eighteen dollars an hour. It's like the lowest dollars per hour earnings that we're seeing in, in mm-hmm. nationwide right now, and we're seeing that um, actually surprisingly Sundays are are the highest dollars per hour that we see. Now True. keep in mind keep in mind that Sundays will be encompassing of the late night Saturday night nightlife letting out as well that bleeds into to Sunday. Um, we see drivers are making the most in and. That's on particularly on rideship as you transition that into food and grocery are kind of similar, 
similar prices or ranges there. And, and we, but they're, they're going to be much lower when we see that like the, the lower end of the bound over the last 12 weeks has been around $14 per hour, uh, which is uh, typically on Wednesdays as we see it's like slowest for food um, and, and Thursdays for grocery. And then um, that goes up to a range we're looking at 14 to about $17 an hour. So the tighter band, um, maybe a little bit more predictability in, in earnings and wages, but also there's like a lower band that exists there. But there's the, always that trade-off in rideshare versus fruit, like delivery. It's like delivery, you're, you don't have people in your vehicle and you can kind of do what you want. You can, you see people driving, you know, packing up in cars and driving along with their partner or with their friends or things when they do deliveries. You can't do that in rideshare. So there's there's pros and cons to each, and some people are willing to sacrifice less earnings for more convenience and, and their personal preferences. As we think about, uh, I think you asked about like workers, like when when uh, key findings around like when uh, workers may be like working. Yeah. Most I would say is like we see that like uh, I mean. Most most of the supply is out on the road um, in the mid-afternoons is what we're seeing. Uh, and that's pretty consistent across categories. I would say that um, you do see, obviously, like more volatile spikes on, like, let's say, food delivery uh, supply, where there's, like, so spikes in not only supply, but also demand. Usually, like we see on food nationwide, is like eleven a.m. and five p.m. are just like just pop up, and they're just large points on the curve of like the the trend of the day. Uh, just for like the start of the lunch hour, as well as lunch orders coming in and dinner orders coming in. There. Gotcha, man. This has been a, a lot of really good uh, data, I think, for for marketplace leaders and for people on the supply side. Super helpful, and uh, really, we're huge fans of what you guys are doing at Gridwise. We're we're coming closer to to the end here, and one of the yep. questions we always ask is, thinking through everything that that we've talked about. I feel like we've hit on a number of a number of issues within the same topic, um, but thinking through it all, what's the biggest takeaway that you would want marketplace leaders to have? Um, yeah, I don't want to sound like a broken record here, but I think it, it ties back to a point I was making earlier is to, to really like figure out how to understand, take a holistic approach into the metrics that you're measuring on your supply to be able to understand not only what's happening in your network, but how is that comparing to everything else that's happening across other marketplaces and, and uh, networks in that you, that may not be operating in, in not only just your category, but like if you're a if you're a food delivery marketplace, yes, you should compare yourself to other food delivery marketplaces and how supply those supply trends are and metrics are changing across them all. But I, I think what's also important, what we don't see a lot of, uh, we see like kind of mistakes and and, and and views on how some companies will only look through the the lens of apples apples that they're thinking about those they're maybe competing with. Whereas like you should be looking across the entire landscape of categories because a lot of people are playing tug of war for the same types of drivers who are flex gig workers who work between all of these different types of services. And so you need to be cognizant and understanding of, of all like the behaviors across all these categories and not just the one you're operating in. Gotcha. That's really good. Uh, and then the last question for you is kind of the opposite of the, that one. And it's off of this topic. What's the biggest thing that you, biggest piece of advice you usually would give to, to marketplace leaders? Yeah, I mean, I would say is, um, I would say it kind of, uh, I think that's the biggest takeaway from, from my opinion is, is mm-hmm. capturing that holistic view. But I think sure. it's just like, I, I think it was, if I had to add to that and, and, and answer this in a more unique way, I would say that it's like, I, I talked about earlier our supply. We all know, I, I, this isn't new for marketplace leaders, that supply of, uh, the supply of drivers is becoming fragmented across so many different and new services that are popping up all the time. I think what you don't see a lot when you think about the worker experience across all these different applications is 
everyone's kind of trying to do the same thing. It's just there's not a lot of differentiation between what one platform does versus the others. Everyone's moving towards instant instant pay across the gig economy and that will spread into other types of work, like worker classifications as well. Um, you see, if you look at the perks and benefit tabs of these in these reward and loyalty programs of these companies, you see the same companies in all of them. You see the 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 miles tracker, the finance apps, the uh, uh, other tools that you can access, and it's just kind of all the same. So it's just like I I would say my advice would be um, to kind of try to think outside of uh, like dip like look at under like be cognizant of that. And, and figure out new ways of thinking through your business model that, and, and, and for how you build loyalty by probably recognizing that like, you're not gonna win 100% of loyalty on your platform of workers. And as long as they're, t- you know, they're 1099s. And, um, and so it's just like, how do you, how do you embody that further and, 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 and use that as a way to like, recognize that within the experience you create for workers to where you can still capture their loyalty and, and ensure you have the right balances in your marketplace of supply and demand, but empower them as workers more so than just a driver on your service. Super helpful. Awesome. Well, you know, Ryan, I kind of mentioned earlier, we're huge fans of what you guys are doing at Gridwise, big fans of you. And um, so just want to tell anyone who's listening to go check what you're doing out at gridwise.io is their website. It'll be linked also in the show notes for the podcast as well as we'll link to your LinkedIn profile, Ryan, and I recommend that uh, you go follow him and just keep up with what they're doing, innovating, creating awesome things and serving in awesome ways in the gig economy. So just want to push to that. Is there anything else that I could uh, push people to, Ryan, that you would that uh, would be helpful for you? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the, the audience may find like a, the area of our website is most value, like relevant uh, to them maybe in the, like, you, you go to gridwise.io, as Brooks mentioned, but we'll say it's a slash, forward slash business. So gridwise.io slash business is going to be um, a place where we, you can gain insight into the different ways that you can engage with us as a, as a partner, as a consumer of, of, of analytics, um, a way to reach workers and um, yeah. try to work together to be value added to them. That that specific link we'll we'll also just put in the show notes for you guys then. Awesome. Well, thank you, Ryan. Thanks for all of the insights you brought to the podcast and to our audience. And uh, to you guys who are listening, we really appreciate that you are uh, not just listeners, but part of the community that we're building and interacting with us on uh, on LinkedIn and uh, through our newsletter and all those other ways. We, we really appreciate you, and we just want you guys to know we want to hear from you if you have thoughts or questions. Uh, we we are really happy to have you guys all in the in the band with us, uh, including you, Ryan. So thanks thanks for joining us and 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 providing the insights that you have with uh, with uh, to our audience. So we love you guys. We'll see y'all in the uh, in the next episode.